Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for Game Week 30 where we look at what my plans are. And they're a bit up in the air at the moment because there are several possibilities. But before we do that, let's see what happened in Game Week 29 for the record-breaking week where the average score was just 12 points. Top scorer in the Midnight Mule Mini League for Game Week 29 was Joe Parkhouse with Trent A.A. the Goat with a massive 44 points. That was managed with Captain Fofana on 16, Robinson 11, Martinez 5 and that's all. And he was so confident about his choices that on the bench he had Turner and Gross who weren't even going to play anyway. So it doesn't matter who you put on your bench if you're sure of your first 11 I guess. Top of the league is Mohamed Sabbath K with Artetikas with 20 points. They managed that with Captain Sun on 4 and that's all. But on the bench, they did have Leno on 7 and Gibbs White on 7. So it was nearly a good score. So nearly well done on that. As for me, I'm down in 195th. I got 21 points. That was Fofana with 8 points. Captain Sun with 4. And that's all. But on my bench, I did have Robinson with 11. So that's funny. <laughs> so three green arrows in a row. It's a little bit nice. I am 9 points to the wrong side of half a million if you care about rank. But what's important is I'm 293 behind top spot. So if I can outscore top by 33 points a week between now and the end of the season, I can still win the whole thing. When it comes to rank, in case you're wondering, in my mind there's first and then there's not first. And I'm, I'm currently in the not first group. So <laughs> who cares if I'm 10,000 or 10 million? Thank you everyone who watches these videos. Uh, it's very much appreciated. Those of you that subscribe and like and leave comments, etc. Thank you. The FPL Game Week website. If you go there, you can see the Content Creators League. They've made a special league just for the content creators. The popular ones. FPL Fran is currently top. Ben Krellin in third. Mark Southerns is seventh. And Harry's in tenth. And Harry passed 100,000 subscribers this weekend just gone on his live stream. So well done, Harry, for doing that. I started watching Harry when he was around the 1,000 mark. So uh, I should have got a little badge or something, I guess. As for me, I'm all the way down in 66th, which is one place below As and four places below Holly Shand. Regarding transfer ideas for Game Week 30, I'm torn three ways between what to do. I would like to wildcard because it's fun and you get a dopamine hit. Alternatively, I could take several hits. Another option is I don't really need to change too much at all. I could just make zero or one transfers. So when we know what the fixtures are likely to be, the doubles in game week 34 and 37, if we get that information before the deadline, that will massively influence what we do. If we don't hear, then I'll probably be guided by what the current injury expectations are for the players. At the moment, four of my five defenders are injured and the fifth defender is a stupid man for Brighton who's away to Liverpool this game week. So it's not looking great at the back. But my front eight, of which I can only play seven of course, this is pretty bulk standard and they're good. Saka, Foden, Palmer, Garnacho, Son, Watkins, Solanke, Haaland. All popular choices, all good players. So my thoughts if I do do a wild card these are the players I'm looking at. If I just make one or two changes, they'll probably be from these. Neto, I've already got. I quite like his fixtures coming up. And of course, they've got a double coming up. Kelleher for Liverpool. Looks like Alisson's going to be out for a while longer yet. Kelleher's very cheap, but the downside of him is I can only then get two outfield Liverpool players. Onana, for all the abuse I've been giving Man United this season, he is actually doing quite well. They've got a double game week coming up. And I really like Pickford. When I had him, he was no good for me. But when it comes to just watching the games on telly, Pickford's possibly my uh, my favourite keeper. I think he's a lot of fun. And this game's about fun, so why not pick players that you like watching? For the defenders, I'd really like to get Virgil van Dijk. Of course, a chance of clean sheets, and he likes to go up for the corners. An Arsenal defender. Ben White's my favourite, but I could get two or even at a stretch three Arsenal defenders. But obviously, if I go three... It means there's no Arsenal attackers. I like Trippier. I know he's injured at the moment, but Newcastle do have some nice fixtures coming up and he is attacking and I think he could be getting several returns between now and the end of the season. 
And we learned recently that Botman's out, I think, for the rest of the season, which means LaSalle's will probably be playing, and he's only 3.9. So if I'm really pushed for money, I could just stick LaSalle's in there. Gusto, he's a must-have player, I think. He's very cheap. Chelsea got some very nice fixtures. He's attacking. James is probably going to be out for a while yet. I think he's a very important player. Everyone should buy him. Hey, Nore, Wolves have got some nice fixtures coming up. They've got a double coming up. Uh, and he's an attacking defender. He's cheap. He's good to have. And if I need another cheap player, Branthwaite's another option. So until I work out my attacking players, I won't know how much money I've got left for the defence, but these are my main thoughts at the moment. With the midfielders, of course I'd like to have Salah. We don't know his fitness level at the moment. He was taking off early on the FA Cup because he wasn't fully fit. But if he's fully fit for Brighton at home and then Sheffield United at home, that'd be very nice. And the other five midfielders I'd most like to have are the five that I've already got. Which is kind of goes against using the wildcard because I'm happy with this lot really. Apart from it'd be nice to have Salah. But if I get Salah, who will I get rid of? And I've looked at permutations where I can choose any of the other five and get in Salah. Other midfielders that I like is Kay Havertz and Odegaard. Fernandez, Gordon and Gross. Gross would be more likely toward the end of the season. But any or all of those midfielders on the screen could be in my team between now and the end of the season. So there's some really tough choices to make. Regarding the forwards, I currently have the very popular Harland, Watkins and Solanke. They've all got nice fixtures in maybe two of the next three game weeks at least. I think Solanke might have three good games coming up. So uh, I could keep those three for the next several weeks, play them and they could do well. However, I would really like to get in Jackson this game week. He's at home to Burnley and they've got some other nice fixtures coming up and Chelsea have doubles. I've had Jackson earlier in the season, I think once or twice, and he let me down and very, very sad. But I don't learn from my lessons, so <laughs> I might get him back. Someone else who's let me down many times the last two years is Darwin. I'd really like to get in Darwin. Now he's got an injury, so he's not gone off on international duty but Liverpool have also said they expect him to be fit for game week 30. So who knows? If those two are fit, I'd really like to bring them in. And if I do bring them those in, I would probably lose Haaland and Solanke. I'm also tended by Isaac. Newcastle has some nice fixtures. The downside of Isaac, of course, is he does seem a bit injury prone. And I also very much like Hoyland. But again, he may be nearer the end of the season. They've got a double game week coming up at some point. I will almost certainly get Hoyland at some point this season if he stays fit. But I don't know when I'm going to be able to fit all these players in. This is the dilemma i got at the moment. So one legitimate option I've got is to more or less keep with the team that I've got at the moment. And if I do that, then Sun will quite possibly get to wear the old mule hat. He's at home to Luton this week. And the vice will be with Palmer, home to Burnley. I've got Haaland and Foden at home to Arsenal. I've got Dupravka and Trippier at home to West Ham, albeit Trippier may be injured. I've got Senesi at home to Everton. I've got Watkins at home to Wolves. I've got Solanke at home to Everton. So of those nine players on the screen now, it's perfectly feasible they all get good scores this coming game week, which makes you think maybe you don't you need to make any subs or use the wild card. And then there's Saka and Gabriel away to Man City, but Arsenal are very good. They could still get something there. And for the bench, I've got Neto at home to Everton. That's a nice fixture. Garnacho away to Brentford. That's a nice fixture. Doughty away to Tottenham. Not so good. And they're stupid and away to Liverpool. Not so good. So a reason for not wildcarding is I think my team's pretty good. A reason for wildcarding is it's fun. And I particularly want in certain players that I don't currently have. As for the background picture... I'm a grumpy old man, now I can complain about these things. Our kettle broke this week. And it seems to me that about once a year, our kettle breaks. We have to get a new kettle. And it's such a rip-off. Like, kettles are about 30 quid. They last 12 months. That's like £2.50 a month or something for a kettle. It's ridiculous. Why can't they make a kettle that just lasts for years? There we have it. That's what happened in Game Week 29 and my potential tentative plans for Game Week 30. I really don't know what I'm doing yet. I know what I want to do. I want to wildcard. But 
I also know that may not be sensible because my team's actually not too bad at the moment. Still, I guess another few days, week and a bit, I'll find out what I do do. At the moment, I just don't know. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a fun time working out your plans for Gaming 30. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>